To describe Gary Meacham in two words, I would call her an encourager and real. She is a real friend. She is a real authentic person that talks about um, her struggles. She's not afraid to just say it like it is. And you know what she also does is she wildly cheers on others. She's such an encourager in the way that she just lives her life in general. You know, one of the things that I've learned is that there is an abundance. There's no scarcity in life. And the one thing that I love about her is that she lives life abundantly. we have been talking a lot yesterday and today (laughs) about a lot of things so I'm really excited I feel like we could just be very chatty today (laughs) we could we could talk for a long time (laughs) but we have a short period of time and you know one of the things that we talked about is forgiveness we're really teaching and equipping in these classes um, the women of faith collection of classes So I invited you to talk about forgiveness because you have such a powerful story about forgiveness. You actually have three boulders of forgiveness that you've shared with us. But you know, I really would love for you just to share one. Let's start out with one that has been so impactful for you. And the reason I want you to talk about this is because I want our viewers, our listeners to really understand that forgiveness is for them, that it is so powerful and that anything can be forgiveness because that's what God commands us to do. So I'd love for you to just share with us um, about maybe your number one boulder of forgiveness that you've experienced in life. Oh, Alita, first of all, thank you so much yes, for I'm having so me on your thankful show. thankful you're here with me. I Girl. just know you are gonna be such a treat for our listeners and viewers. I mean, you just, I love listening to your beautiful heart. Oh, you know? you're so sweet. You're yeah. one of my favorite people. <laughs> you know that girl. And I love, I love women of faith. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of refer it as a boulder yeah. in life. Cause I think sometimes things hit us that just almost boulder us over, right. you know, often Absolutely. things might hit us that are just little burrs or little strikes to our life yeah. that that we feel like, oh, you know, it hurt. But there's some things in life that almost just roll right yeah. over you. And yeah. so- What uh, a visual. Yeah, you know, like a boulder just sits on you. Yeah. And so probably my number one, and you know, we talk a lot about forgiveness together and a lot of the work we do together has been with my husband, Bobby. Yeah. And you know, I'm crazy about my husband. As, so as you crazy. mentioned, he's amazing. You know him, he's really, um, one of the best, well, the best man that I know. Um, But we went through some horrible pain in our marriage. We've been married a long time now, but right around the 10 year mark, right around that. And really it was when his baseball career was starting to wane. He wasn't the star. He wasn't, you know, the first round draft pick that he had been. And it was starting to wane and he sadly, reverted to some of the behaviors of high school here we had been married for 10 years we had three small children he was literally the chapel leader for every team we'd ever been Mm -hmm. on it wasn't as though he was just a lost crazy man he was a good man but what happened is he started to turn to women to feel better about himself and so over the course of a couple of years unbeknownst to me there was a lot of infidelity. Yeah. And at a certain time that was so <laughs> driven by God, I was able to really kind of uncover some of what had happened. And to Bobby's credit, at the right time, he was completely transparent about it and yeah. honest about it. And it was years worth of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it took me to a very, very dark place, Alita, I'm not gonna lie. Right. You know, in my life, this was the one thing I begged God, even as a young woman, please God, don't let me marry a cheater. Don't let me marry a cheater. And when you marry into pro ball, you know, you always hear all these things about pro athletes and the fact that women just kind of throw themselves. 
at these players, it's true. Yeah. It's probably worse than you think, right. you know? And so when we started down this dark, dark path, uh, I, I wasn't sure that we could make it. I wasn't sure that it was gonna work. And I was so despondent at one point they thought I had a brain tumor, my health went down, we separated for quite a while. And just through a, a series of hard choices yeah. to, to love each other. And you know, that's not, not everybody can repair a marriage yeah. that suffers these kind of blows. But uh, watching Bobby and his commitment to being the man that God wanted him yeah. to be, you know, that takes a lot. Yeah. He would do whatever it took to be that man first. And then secondly, the man I needed him to be and our children needed him to be. Yeah. And me watching that gave me the confidence that I could hope that our trust could be rebuilt. It took time, but you know, the whole essence of forgiveness right. was what struck me. The story of the prodigal son where both, both sons have different stories. Right. His was one obviously mm -hmm. the one that went out and was sowing his oats, mine was the other. Yeah, I was the one that had been steady, leading the Bible studies all around the country, you know, trying to bring people to faith in God. And I was mad at God for a little bit, I have to be honest. Yeah. Like, Lord, I've done nothing but serve you. I begged you to not let this be a part of my life. It was part of my mother's life. It was a part of um, my grandparents' life. I begged God not to let it be a part of mine, but what is, happened from that has been brilliant. Bobby's heroic to me mm -hmm. to see the, the, just the commitment mm -hmm. to getting it right. And now we have a, a ministry really to people struggling with infidelity, people wanting to repair their marriage from that. So you know God can turn, as we know, any pain into wow. purpose. Forgiveness reflects the character of Christ. It can be difficult to forgive the same as He does. If that's where you find yourself right now, our comprehensive collection of classes and resources cover more than 100 topics like these. All of our classes are based on biblical truth, giving you hope beyond what the world has to offer. Sign up to watch the Women of Faith collection of classes at Liftable TV and start moving toward the freedom you crave. We envision a world transformed by women living victoriously with Him. We prepare our kids to be able to speak up what they, for what they believe in. God wants to provide for us all the wisdom and the knowledge that we need. He wants you to have a group of friends. He wants you to feel like you belong. He wants you to be in community because we're made for a relationship. Watch over 80 diverse Christian programs, including the Women of Faith show and classes on Liftable. Okay, so let's unpack all of that. There's so many little pieces that we could we could talk about. Yeah. So with a lot of people, they could end up getting divorced, okay? They could choose to not reconcile. They yeah. could choose to become bitter and angry. Tell me about yeah. like how practically speaking, how did you actually forgive him? And you know, you told me one time, you said that Bobby was one of the most inspiring people to you, or the most inspiring people to you. Mm. And I'm like, wow, that's <laughs> that's amazing for you to be able to say that right alongside the, the yeah. question before is, you know, who did you have to forgive the most? Yeah. That's powerful. So unpack that for me, like practically speaking, because one of the things here at Women Faith that we're so passionate about is helping women live victoriously in Christ despite the struggle, right? Yeah. So we have to live in victory. We don't have to stay in this broken place, right? right. But we're gonna have struggles. God never said, as a Christian, you're not gonna have struggles. You will have struggles, right? And so how do you get back to living in victory after yeah. something like that? Yeah, thanks Thanks so much. You know, really what I do know is, and I wanna say this obviously to, to people listening, forgiveness is not always reconciliation. You know, I know that yeah. for everybody, it's not the happy, beautiful rainbow ending uh, that it that it has been for us. And honestly, it hasn't been easy. Right. Let's just say that right sure. there, right? But when we think about forgiving in a situation, really as lovers of God, it's what he tells us to do. So I would have come to these places with Bobby 
no matter what. I would have had to. And we've talked about it in both yeah. our lives. We've had to. Right. We've had to come to these places. Right. But uh, with Bobby, there, there's a, a real moment I can remember. I'll never forget. I almost gave up. I was really like, this is too hard. There's too much. We are, we're not going to make yeah. it. It's, it's too weighty. And I remember I got in, a, in our car and I drove out away. I was going to get a hotel room for the night. He was home with the kids. They were all asleep in bed. And I was just going to get a hotel room. I was just so mad and I was at my yeah. wit's end. Yeah. Would you not believe this, that for the radius of like almost an hour and a half to two hours from my home, no hotels had rooms. Wow. Now that, first of all, would never happen, right? Wow. So I end up driving <laughs> back in front of our house and just sitting there and just like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what yeah. to do. Do I stay with this man? Do I trust this man that has literally broken my heart? What do I do? And this image came in my mind of New York City streets. You know how they have the, the carriages that are pulled by horses, yeah. those horse-drawn carriages? This image came to me of a horse-drawn carriage. And I once asked one of the owners of one of those, why do your horses have these blinders yeah. on? You know, why, why are they there? And he said, the horses have the blinders so they won't get spooked. So they're not looking too much to the sides. These blinders keep their eyesight only towards what's ahead. Yeah. And I felt like God said to me, you in this moment need to trust me. You're not trusting Bobby Meacham. You're yeah. trusting me. Good. I'm telling you, he will be the man that you pray and hope that he can be. Wow. But in this Love moment, that. you're gonna have to put blinders on because he's not there yet. Yeah. You're getting there. You know, he, he's not there yet, but don't get spooked. Don't look to the right or left, just look one step ahead. And so for me, that was that was really the initiating stage yeah. to knowing that that I could go through these um, these steps of, of forgiveness and for and for us reconciliation. Yeah. OK, so talk to me about what does victory in your marriage look like right now, because I want to know what um, daily life looks like. I mean, even in your, it, while I introduce you, like yeah. you guys are excited to see each other, come home to each other, even though you're apart so often, yeah. what does that look like for you now? Yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've raised kids. Our kids are, are grown now and Bobby's still a major league coach. He's a coach for the Phillies, uh, -huh. uh this season. Yeah. And so our lifestyle is still the same. I travel constantly right. with my work both here and, and in Uganda. So, the way that I, I think it works so well for us now is that we completely respect each other. Yeah. There's such a high level of respect and, and we're inspired by each other. I think you mentioned that he is calm. <laughs> he is just calm. You know, girls, sometimes I say, I gotta take his pulse. Is he alive? You are not calm. I'm like, I'm like high energy, as you can probably see. Yeah. I'm all about action. I yeah. love God action. I love God drama, not people drama. Right. But I love that, you know? And so he brings me here yeah. and I I bring him up, yeah, you know? So and good. so it's kind of a nice balance. Plus, I think you learn after you've lived with each other long enough to quit changing each other. Yeah. You know, you try to change each other. Well, you try to. It you doesn't try. work. It doesn't work. <laughs> so I can either really just keep pressing to try to change him or I can realize we're allies. Yeah. We're allies in this together. Well, and what I love is I know that you have gone speaking together about restoring marriages and infidelity yeah. and being able to team up and say, hey, look, we have a Christ-centered marriage. And I always think about a Christ-centered marriage there. There's Gary, there's Bobby, mm -hmm. and then there's Jesus is at the top. Christ is yeah. at the top. And as you both come closer together, all of a sudden you come closer to Jesus and you come closer together in your marriage. I love thinking of it that way because my husband, GJ, and I, as we come closer to Jesus each and every day, yeah. I feel like our marriage is better and better and better right. because Jesus is at the center of our covenant marriage. Right, that's right. Yeah. And you know, marriage is not easy. Right. I mean, you're taking two people <laughs> that are so different, you know, and you're you're trying to, as the Bible says, become one. Right. That has some struggle to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't want to ever present as women right. that we've got this perfect scenario. Yeah. It takes intentional choices to love well every yeah. day. Yeah. Every day. Well, and the other thing that you said, just as you kind of share this initial story of forgiveness, there's so many other aspects of things that you've had to deal with. And, you know, there can be depression, there can be stress, there can be so many 
other struggles that happen. And that's one of the things here at Women Faith, we have 100 resources on all these different yeah. things, all these different struggles that people can go through. And we have help. We have what to do under biblical truths with all of our keys for living. Um, and so forgiveness is one. And we d- dig in in our collection of classes mm-hmm. and we talk about forgiveness. We talk about stress. We talk about worry. Um, so having the viewers go and listen to that and really getting that victory, like dig in, find some answers, be, um, ha- overcome that struggle, find true right. forgiveness like you have. You know, I think it's so easy to listen to your story and be like, oh, well, that's great for Gary and Bobby. They right. restore their marriage. And we want that for our listeners as well. Right, that's why I love working with you, Alita. We've gotten to do a lot of things together and these intentional classes that we offer people really give the strategy. I mean, right now we're just in conversation, Yes. but that's why I love your work and the work of Women of Faith, which I'm so committed to because it gives the strategy. Mm -hmm. So good. All right, girl, most exciting experience. I really want you to share something that's been an exciting experience in your life. Most exciting Because I want to know okay. about this fiery woman who <laughs> likes the fun action girl. Oh, Let's hear it. You are so <laughs> funny. Well, okay, okay. You know, um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of daring, which is- Me too. Is funny. Yes, yeah. that's probably why we like each other so <laughs> much. But um, I, of course, you know, run a place in Uganda and Uganda is the source of the Nile, believe yeah. it or not. And so, my first time there, I was offered the chance to go river rafting on the Nile River. Okay, so I've river rafted the Colorado River okay, I before. Said, I feel nervous already, just <laughs> hearing that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it, my, you know, instead of a bachelorette party, I had my friends, we river rafted the Colorado River okay. for my pre-marriage, like fun time, sure. right? So I get this thing. So I'm I'm, I'm getting ready to, to go on this rafting expedition, you know, with yeah. some people that I didn't know all that well and a few people that were on our, our team uh, that we had come from America with. And I'm telling you, Alita, I thought I was gonna die. Our raft flipped five times within the first like hour of this of no. this thing and we just that sucked sounds under. horrible. That and sounds they horrible. had all these calls, you know, from the safe boat like caca, caca. If someone goes <laughs> over, all I kept hearing was caca, caca. Then they just reach in and pull you up out of the water. But they they instructed us start telling your grocery list, like to your mind. If you're underwater, you're gonna think you're drowning, you're not drowning. Yeah. So I'm under the water, I'm like apples, bread, milk. The next thing I know, I'm like, Jesus, I'm dying. And so (laughs) they pull me up out of the water, put me on the safe boat. And I got back in the raft. Some of my friends did not, but uh, that's probably the most exciting thing I've done. Now I've done it twice. I don't know why I went back to do it a second time. Would I do it a third? No, No. I would not. It's too much. We need you safe. I want to be safe. I want to live. You know, it reminds me of the most terrifying, I won't say most exciting, but most terrifying experience of my life. Um, We decided to go from one island to another island. And my husband was so sweet. He reserved this boat for us. And it was this Mm. huge, big, long cigarette boat, I think is what they call it. And it was starting to storm. The waves were coming up. The rain was coming down. It felt like pin needles on us as we try to trek Uh over to this neighboring island. And all of a sudden, he kind of looks at us. He he pulls off into a cove. And like we would go up on the top of the waves. And it felt like the boat was coming out (sighs) of the water. That's what it literally felt like. Terrifying. Terrifying, horrible experience. And I'm a daring person. Yeah but not when the ocean can swallow me up whole. That, that is not exciting. <laughs> There's something scary about yes, that. Yes, terrifying. So he pulls off into a cove and he says, hey, I'll take you if you guys wanna go, but you know, we're gonna have to come back. It's gonna get worse because we're not even out into the ocean. We were still like in between, like in a bay kind of area. And I look at him and I, I did not care what anybody else on the boat said. I said, you turn me around. I am going home to my children tomorrow. Somehow, some way, <laughs> I am <laughs> not <laughs> get me out of here. Up yeah. in this ocean. It was the most That's terrifying. So and I am I'm faith filled. I am daring. I love, I mean, I've gone parasailing, paragliding. I've done yeah. lots of hell. I mean, all kinds of different things. Yeah. Not that day. 
No. Please turn us around. Yeah. Bring me back to safety. <laughs> Some things are too much. <laughs> it was crazy. So, okay, I have another question for you. If you had to write a title for the story of your life, if you had to pick a title, mm. what would that be and why? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I think the title of my life would be Gutsy Faith. You know, I came up with that Gutsy phrase faith. years ago. I just liked that because when I was little, people used to go, you got guts. Remember, did you yeah. ever say that? Like, oh, that took guts uh -huh. or you got guts. Well, we all have guts, but you know, <laughs> it means you're, yeah. you're, you're, gutsy. you're yeah. daring. You're like brave, yeah. you're courageous. And obviously we know biblically that's a plus yeah. to have gutsy faith, to have courageous faith is a plus. So, so much of what God has asked me to do in my life has been gutsy. I love you that. You know, so much of our work in Uganda or even just here, you know, yeah. in terms of, For sure. you know, try to get the books published, try new things. You don't know how to, to, to do something, try it, learn how. And I just so encourage, you know, anybody listening to us now to live gutsy faith. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's, that's such a fun way to live. Yeah. It's not always a safe way to live, but why would well, we want to be safe? You haven't really lived all that safe. I mean, come on, let's... No. How many times have you moved in your life? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, we've moved 47 times in the first 10 years of our marriage. Girl. Yeah, and we've been married... That is not safe. Well over 30 years so now. So you have to have some gutsy faith to do the things that you've done in your... I mean, wow, we're just kind of barely unpacking your life at the little tiny bit. But look, listen to all those things we just talked about already. That's gutsy faith. And you know what? I love how courageous you are in what you're doing in Uganda. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we've talked about forgiveness. We've talked about having a gutsy faith. You have your podcast. So listeners yeah. go listen to your um, gutsy faith podcast. It's so good. Um, and then you have mm -hmm. the Vine Uganda. And I want you to right. just touch on that a little bit today um, sure. because one of your ultimate dreams is now coming true. So tell us about that. Yes, yes. Well, you know, mission work was really never on my mind. I was not one of those girls that was like, I just want to go to Africa or yeah. something like that. Right. I never said that ever. Not once, wow. not once. And I went my first time just as a favor, really, to a friend who had a daughter that had started an, an orphanage there. And so I went as a favor thinking one and done. But while I was there, God blossomed something in my heart mm. that I really can't even That's hardly great. put words to. Um, and so myself and a former co-founder, we we started a place in a very underserved area called Kamuli, Uganda. And I've since reorged, uh, no longer with him, but reorged yeah. um, and still called the Vine Uganda. But we serve women and children in 13 villages. And so we're we're building um, an abandoned baby cottage and then onto schools and vocational centers. We run those programs now, yeah. but we're just building our own. So the baby cottage is almost done. It's wow. about two weeks from being done. Wow. And because of the pandemic, there's so many abandoned kids. Right. It's, it's an epidemic there, far worse than the effects of the pandemic. Right. And so in that region. And so we're, we're so thankful for God's timing because it, yeah. it, it just worked out this way. Tell us where they can find you. What What's your site and what's your social media? Oh, I'd love to. So, yeah. well, The Vine Uganda is just simply thevineuganda.org. Okay. That's one way. Great. And then for me, it's just garymeacham.com. Simple Easy. as can be, garymeacham.com. Then, of course, I'm just, I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. Um, okay. We've got our business page there. And well, we also, definitely want our audience to be following you because what you share mm. is so good. Thank oh, you for doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah. The Vine Uganda has an Instagram as well. Any of those, we'd love to hear from anyone. One of the things I love to ask the question is, what is a truth bomb that you use in your life like if you could say in 30 seconds or less like this message that's so profound that they can just the audience can just walk away with a truth bomb in 30 seconds like if they had to remember the one thing gary meacham had to say what would that be <laughs> wow Woo. that's a lot of pressure, no pressure. I'm not, <laughs> wow well let's see you know i'm just thinking about how we've talked a, a bit about forgiveness you know that's such a powerful topic i think uh someone told me once, or I heard this, I'm not exactly sure where, but 
that when you refuse to forgive, it's like setting yourself on fire and mm. expecting your offender to die of wow. smoke inhalation. Wow. You know, and I just have thought so often about that. To refuse forgiveness yeah. is so dangerous for us. Yeah. For That's us. So good. Yeah. And you know, I just want to kind of expand on that topic because so often we think forgiveness is optional. Forgiveness isn't optional. If you want to follow Jesus the way that we desire, you know, if you want to walk in God's will for your life, you are commanded to forgive. You know, I think about, um, think about a big meat hook around your neck. So a big meat hook is like this. Think about having that around your neck and you put a big bag on the front of you. And imagine you start putting stones in this big bag. You put stone after stone, you have a hundred pounds of weight. And these are offenses that were from other people. And it weighs you down. And think of the things you're not able to do when you have a meat hook around you with a hundred pounds of stone in front of you. Yeah. You can't live Ooh. the life that God has for you. And so God commands us to forgive people. And that means taking those stones back out of the bag that's holding you down from the things that God has for you, the will of God. And you take one of those stones out and you set it back into God's hands. You take one of the stones out and you set it back into God's hands. And that's one of the things that has been, that has made it so much easier for me to forgive people is God commands it and he will take care of it. Let him take care of the offense of the offender. When you take that all back out, all of a sudden you can live into God's will for your life because you don't have the weight around your neck right. any longer. Oh, that's such a good picture. One of the things I struggled with more than anything is forgiving myself. Now, we just talked about releasing the stones from our offenders and giving them back to God. But when you have to forgive yourself, that's kind of a different story, isn't it? And so one of the stories that I love to think about is the adulterous woman story in John 8. Think of how the woman was brought in by the Pharisees to the temple courts and Jesus was there and she came down and she's down in the dirt crying and she was so embarrassed because everyone was around and the, the Pharisees wanted to stone her to death. That's what they thought that they should be able to do. And she was saved by Jesus, wasn't she? He said, the first to, that have never sinned, you can throw the first stone. And of course they all walk away. They drop their stones and they walk away. And, and Jesus looks at her and says, they have not condemned you, nor do I. Now go and sin no more. Something to that effect. You can read John 8 for the exact wording. And what I love about that is there's all these stones that people could have stoned her. But she also has a choice, doesn't she? She could have taken those stones. She could have picked them up and she could have put them in that, that big bag, that meat hook around her. She could have picked up those things and not forgiven herself. So my encouragement to you is a lot of times we talk about forgiving and we talk about forgiving an offender which is someone else. What if you're just forgiving yourself? That's been my experience. I wanna forgive myself because I wanna live the life God has for me. Don't collect the stones. Let those back into the hands of God. It doesn't matter if somebody else or if you need to forgive yourself. Take those stones back out. Get rid of the stones. Don't condemn yourself because Jesus doesn't. He says, I do not condemn you. Now go and sin no more. Friends, you can forgive yourself because you need to go where God has for you to go. Do you want to experience a deeper relationship with Jesus? Join me for inspiring conversations that will equip you to walk more fully in God's purpose for your life. On my show, you'll meet a wide range of guests who are impacting the kingdom in meaningful ways every day. Check out the latest episodes only on Liftable TV. I don't want to miss the opportunity for you to be sitting across from me and for the audience to be listening. I want to hear from you. Final thoughts, something you want the audience to know, or maybe it's a advice you would have given yourself 10 years ago. What would that be? Advice to the audience or maybe to your younger self? Oh, wow. 
Well, you know, we've talked about a lot of really deep things. I was just right. listening to you talk about the meat hooks and forgiving yourself and all of this, you know, uh, it's not only been the biggest challenge of my life to forgive other people, yeah. not just Bobby. There's many things in my sure. life I've had to forgive, but to forgive myself too. Mm -hmm. But I love that we were talking about gutsy faith, you know, and I think I would just say to our audience, all of us are called to gutsy faith. Sometimes it's the gutsiest thing you'll do to do something like forgive yourself. Right. It's not always going out and doing these big things that are gutsy. Sometimes it's just listening into the small moments and, and leaning into the, the times in our life that we really need to be courageous. We need to go deeper. We need to live braver yeah. in those moments that might be a friendship. Yeah. It might be trusting someone once again. Yeah. It might be walking away from something. It might be staying at something. And so I think that, you know, to talk to my former self, I've been very hard on myself in my life. I've expected this all the time when God just gives this. Right. Really. And so my posture now, and I've, as I've gotten older, is just more open-handed right this is who i am lord god i thank you so much that you're not leaving me here you're making me better and better but if we can be gutsy right in the way we live and just live with this abandonment to to you know to fear and to what are people going to think and if i forgive then then i'm letting them off the hook yeah. you know these ways of thinking are just so shallow i want to go deep yeah. I want our audience to go deep. That's why I love you. I love your gutsy faith. Faith, I love your courage. Thank you for being here Yo. today. We love you and we're going to have you back soon. Thank you. Thank you for being on. This show is brought to you in part by Faithfully Fit and Free, CHM and ICCI. To learn more, go to womenoffaith.com. Hi, I'm Alita Reynolds, president of Women of Faith. First of all, I simply want to share that I believe God wants all of us to be walking victoriously with Him. I believe this because He's given us the living word, the Bible, as our guide to know what to do when we struggle in our lives. All of our resources here at Women of Faith are practical help based on biblical truth giving you hope beyond what the world has to offer. If you or someone you care about is battling one or more of these 100 topics we have available, we have what you need to not only offer hope, but the steps you need to move forward and for breaking free from what holds you captive. I wanna give you a quick list of our resources and you may want to utilize more than one of these to get the transformation you're really looking for in your life. First of all, we have our Women of Faith classes. Do you like to learn by watching videos instead of reading? Then our growing collection of classes are for you. We have a comprehensive video library that coaches and equips you to walk in victory in every area of your life. As a certified life coach with some of my most trusted friends and experts, we share our own personal journeys of our own struggles of the topic at hand and know how we've been able to overcome them Plus, we'll help you find the tools needed for yourself. Then we have our Women of Faith show with Alita Reynolds. This show is for you if you're inspired by hearing other people's stories of overcoming their struggles to live in victory. These inspiring conversations will encourage you to live the life you're created for. You'll hear stories from guests who are impacting the world in big and small ways every day. We also have our Women of Faith Keys for Living, books and ebooks. Now these keys are great for personal study or even small group studies. The Keys for Living books provide steps to solutions so that you'll discover God's wisdom and guidance in a simple format to walk in freedom and live in victory. Now are you ready to start reading right now? <laughs> Go ahead and download a Key for Living ebook for a complete and comprehensive guide on your chosen topic. Or would you rather read, highlight, and write in your book? Then order a print book to be delivered right to your home. 
Another resource available is our downloadable quick study guides. They contain excerpts from our correlating Keys for Living book to offer an immediate overview and concise answers. If you simply need somewhere to start, then start with our Key to Hope. We want to help you right away with a free gift from us. I'm praying for you to find what you need based on biblical truths. We care about your transformation. Whatever you're facing, your life matters, and God wants you to live in victory. Today's a great day to begin.